Welcome to the Raised with Jesus podcast, 10 minutes every day where the life of Jesus meets yours. You've got your daily Bible reading for March 6, 2019, Ash Wednesday, looking at the first portion of Acts chapter 9. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any men or women belonging to the way, he might bring them to Jerusalem as prisoners. As he went on his way and was approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? He replied, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, but get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you need to do. The men traveling with him stood there speechless. They heard the voice, but did not see anyone. They raised Saul up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes he could not see anything. They took him by the hand and led him to Damascus. For three days he could not see, and he did not eat or drink. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord told him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. In fact, at this very moment he is praying. In a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he can regain his sight. Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many people about this man and how much harm he did to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has authority here from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. The Lord said to him, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the people of Israel. Indeed, I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. And Ananias left and entered the house. Laying his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, whom you saw on your way here, has sent me, so that you may see again, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. This is the word of our God. The conversion of Paul is recounted for us three times in the book of Acts, and here the first one. The second two times, or the second time and the third time, that is, that it is recounted, I think it's by Paul himself when he's standing trial and giving an account of his Christian preaching and his action. And this conversion of Paul is quite remarkable because he is, he's the up and coming rock star of the Jewish world. He's going to be the next leader of the Pharisees and really the the one who would shape Judaism for the next generation to come. He studied under Gamaliel. He's, he was the one standing there and giving his approval, overseeing the martyrdom, or in his words, perhaps at the time, the execution of Stephen. And he's on his way to Damascus. He knows his, his Old Testament, his Bible, backwards and forwards. And he has been um, working against the church. He has authority to persecute those in Damascus. He's got letters from the the church leaders down in Jerusalem, and he's been doing his best to tear apart the followers of the way, as it is called, the Christian church. And when Jesus appears to him, everything changes. When Jesus appears to him, everything changes. And when Jesus appears to him, it's not, it's not a vision. Well, it is a vision, but it is the same resurrected Lord Jesus. Not a vision in the typical sense where we think of like a vision at night, like a dream, but a vision and where he sees Jesus in his glory. The same Jesus who walked and talked before and after his resurrection is the Jesus who appears to him on that road to Damascus. And Paul refers to this again in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 when he refers to how Jesus appeared to him after his resurrection. This is one of his post-resurrection appearances and proofs of the resurrection. So when Jesus appears to him, that really unsettles Paul, because it turns his whole life around. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? To think of that, 
that he's been a Pharisee of Pharisees of the tribe of ben Benjamin, named after the most prominent member of the tribe of Benjamin's family, that is Saul, the first king of Israel. And with all of his zeal, persecuting Christians in every way, standing there <laughs> as Stephen had even had a vision of the Lord Jesus and saw him standing at the right hand of God. And Saul was one of the many who rushed out and carried him out and pelted him with stones until dead. And now Paul sees Jesus. That, that moment itself must have been quite incredible and, and very different. The people who are with him hear the sound of voices, they hear the talking, they probably can't make out all the words, and they see perhaps the bright light accosting Paul there on the road, but they don't get it. They don't know what's going on. Just that when Paul gets up, he can't see. And for three days, he sits there in silence. He can't see, he doesn't talk, he doesn't eat. He's sitting there, and that's all he does for three days, thinking over what he knows of the Bible, thinking over the prophecies that he knows backwards and forwards, thinking over the testimony of Stephen, and thinking over all that he knows about this Jesus Christ, the people that he dragged out of their houses and put into prison, the people <laughs> whose letters he carried in his pocket, the letter to persecute more people in Damascus, and it must have been incredibly, incredibly unsettling. But the gospel remembered is still the gospel, and here it creates faith, because God appears in a vision to this Ananias, this disciple Ananias in Damascus, and in verse 11, God says to him, this man from Tarsus named Saul is praying. Now, we have to understand prayer. It's not just that, that Paul is muttering the words, or that he's that he's echoing all of the prayers that he knew as an Old Testament Jewish believer. But he is praying, because during those three days, in conjunction with that appearance of our resurrected Lord, God used the knowledge of the gospel that he had to bring him to faith. And during those three days, Paul put together the facts of his faith, and during those three days, of course, the Holy Spirit was operative in those remembered gospel passages. And so when God says that he is praying, that's also God saying, by the way, he's become a believer. Because a person who isn't a believer, a person who isn't a Christian, um, doesn't have their prayers heard by God. But Saul is praying. And Hananias is like, wait a second, are we talking about the same Saul of Tarsus? Um, he's got letters here to persecute the church. Are you sure? Are you serious? And God says, go. This man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the people of Israel. Indeed, I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. And that kind of encapsulates the theme for the second half of the book of Acts, beginning in probably chapter 14 or so. We really zoom in on the ministry of the Paul and his, his four missionary journeys. Carrying God's name before the Gentiles and kings and people of Israel. Saul is baptized, something like scales fall from his eyes, and it's entirely possible that for the rest of his life Saul struggled with his eyesight a little bit. That is one of the options that people discuss when they talk about Paul's thorn in the flesh from 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And they often refer to the end of the book of Galatians when Paul says, See how, what large letters I write with my own hand. So it's possible that... Paul struggles with eyesight issues, and in that particular case, um, having sat there for three days during that pivotal moment in his life, the eyesight issues, if that is really the case, for the rest of his life would have been a reminder, not just of his physical weakness, but also of his spiritual weakness and his former way of life in persecuting the Jewish people and the believers in this Jesus Christ. Now we do know, in conjunction with that, that all the way down to his very last letter, written from prison, probably shortly before he is executed, Paul talks about his former way of life, in which he persecuted Christians. And so we know that this moment stuck with him for a long time, because this was the moment where his life collided against the will of God, and God's will won. You can find us 
you can find us actually this evening, 7 p.m. We have Ash Wednesday worship, 6 p.m. supper will be served until about 7. 7 p.m. we have Ash Wednesday worship along with Holy Communion. And you can also follow us on Instagram. Just search for or find us Raised with Jesus. God bless your day.